Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a new bottle here in my cask. It's the Timorous Beastie, 18 years old, 0.7 liter bottle, 46.8 ABV, around 80 euros, dollars, pounds, and it's non-chill filtered and uncolored and it's from the independent bottle of Douglas Lang. Um, Douglas Lang is known for an enormous amount of different independently bottled single malt whiskies from time to time single cask or several casks in batches and since a few years they started with three ranges of blended malt whiskies so mixed together from different distilleries um, and this one the Timorous Beastie is from the Highlands there is the Rock Oyster from the islands and I think the Scallywag from the Isle of Isla. And uh, those are the three regions uh, they deliver blended malts from. And which the series are in is not known with this bottle, uh, but it's well from the available Highland malts. The blending business was the core or is the core competence of Douglas Lang. They started in 1946. The grandfather of the actual proprietor uh, started with a blending of Scotch whiskies, and uh, this name was Douglas Lang, I think. There they got the name from, from the actual is Fred Lang, which is the CEO of this independent bottler, Douglas Lang. Um, the Tomorrow's Beastie is on the market for a few years now and this is the third uh, bottle for the Timorous Beastie. I think I had a 12 year old one already here on my cask. Uh, the second one I don't know. Probably there's one without an eight statement. Nah, don't know. Uh, this is only one of 7258 bottles so it's limited but the name Douglas Lang is not that well known all over the world. Uh, they try hard, but still they are not that well known. So that 7,258 bottles should be enough for half a year, probably. So if you see this, uh, you should head out, uh, but you should have a good chance uh, to get one of those bottles. And here said Douglas Lang established 1948, not 46, 48. I think there had been some shortages of barley after the Second World War because they used the barley for bread and it was forbidden to produce whiskey. And after that, they, they gave it free and then the British could pay their, uh, their war death to the US in form of whiskey and uh, yeah. So here we go. Anticipate gentle spices initially on the nose, warming to honey, vanilla and juicy barley. All are similarly apparent on the integrate palate plus a late layer of macerated dark fruit. The finish shows cuff drop spices, cuff drop spices. More of those dulcet flavors replicated from the palate running to a bone dry final. Yeah, director of malts, Fred Lang. Here we go. The bottle shows a wonderful copper tone on the label as well on the tube. So there's not only uh, the whiskey, the name, but all the appearance, wonderful fruity, all the appearance of the bottle shows uh, well, consistency. <sighs> At first fruity, but only very shortly. Then a spiciness appears. Definitely spiciness carrying vanilla, honey not yet, no, and the barley in whiskey, in malt whiskey, there's so often a distinct barley note that I tend to, well, to ignore it in, 
distinctly. So a lot of malt notes I'm just not smelling because it's in every whiskey. So from time to time I have to step aside and say, well, is there barley in it? And yes, there is barley in it. And it's complex, it's 46.8, quite high, and you can't smell a hint of alcohol. So there's a lot of aroma in it. Mm -hmm. Ha! Full impact in the start. Very short time, some oranges, juicy, fruity, and then switching over to spiciness. And in the moment, all my mouth is filled with spice. Oh, complex. And then afterwards, some fruitiness, dark, old, resting fruits up there. And, well, those <laughs> cuff drops. Yeah, there are some not weird. Uh, seldom tasted spices in the back. Yeah. Not any seed. A little bit of eucalyptus. Nutmeg. Coriander. Probably. And the dryness, yes, it's there, but it's not this citrus dryness, but it's old dryness. So it's a, a real complex malt. Spiciness developing very strong. So it's typically you say you should have the whiskey on your tongue a second for every year of maturation. But keeping it that long <laughs> results in, in a spiciness, in an attack on your tongue. It's not peppery, it's not chili, it's just different complex spices. Yeah. Now they are fading away I'm very long after taste through all my mouth. A wonderful piece of work, really. 18 years old, so it's not that cheap with a price of around 80, but it's in the typical range of older uh, single malt whiskies, but it's a blended malt, as I said in the beginning. Thank you for watching, stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your friends and if you have the chance to taste that, please add your comments to this bottle in our whiskey database. Thank you very much.